What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Dragonflight video. Look at our ugly transmog. Isn't this great? <laughs> this is so ugly. I have uh, I have the four piece. The new four piece bonus for patch 10.1. The new season. I am wearing it right now. So I'm going to go over how the storm build functions. The Gamba build in particular with the new four piece. That's the main focus of this video. Because I had I saw some people in the YouTube comments and some people in my Discord were like, hey, I got the four-piece bonus and the storm build feels horrible. So I wanted to really give it a shot and see like how it felt right now. Let me talk about the main difference between the new four-piece and the old four-piece. And then we'll get into some dungeon footage um, pretty quickly here. Okay, so the old four-piece, the main reason it was really, really good for our storm gamba build... Is because of the two-piece bonus, which says Storm Strike increases the damage of your next Fire Frost Nature spell by 10% and causes it to generate one additional Maelstrom weapon stack. That is enormous. That's what this build is all about. You have to generate tons and tons of Maelstrom weapon stacks so that you can use your spenders so that you can proc Legacy of the Frost Witch. And using your spenders has a chance to refund them, your Chain Lightning and Lightning Bolt, right? So the more you're using your spenders... The more they're refunding themselves, like the higher chance you have of that happening, and the more you're proccing Legacy of the Frost Witch, which means you're able to press Storm Strike more, which means you're able to trigger DRE more. And then it just it's just a big circle. It, it's just this big cycle that just keeps going on. But you have to have something to fuel the engine for the cycle to continue. And that is your Maelstrom weapon stack generation. That's what was so good about the old two-piece. Well, what does the new set do? And what are we losing? Oh, hold on. So the big difference between the new set versus the old set is the old set would generate Maelstrom weapon stacks consistently, right? Every time you use an ability other than Storm Strike, basically, after you use Storm Strike. This one, the new tier set doesn't do that. Now you get refunded for your next two Chain Lightning casts. They also do double damage. So this is what the four piece does, right? You press Sundering, you get a physical and fire damage amp, that's fine. Your next two Chain Lightnings do double damage and they refund 50% of the Maelstrom weapon stacks consumed. This is critical to the Gamba Storm build. Absolutely critical. Because again, that engine, we want to keep it rolling, right? We want to keep it moving. So you have to make sure that you use these two Chain Lightnings after you press Sundering, or else you're not going to get any refund whatsoever. So in AoE, it doesn't really seem to be a problem at all in terms of Maelstrom weapon stack generation. It feels perfectly fine to me. So again, you start Wolves, let's go Doom Winds, and we'll go Sundering right away. Now we've got our Chain Lightnings, we're going to press one of them. And then we're going to Storm Strike, and then we'll do our second Chain Lightning. Oh, we got Storm Strike back, so we got to use it first. Then we do Chain Lightning. There we go. So that's all the refund that we get. Now, we're doing pretty crazy damage as well. Now, we're kind of on our own, and we need to make sure that we're managing our Legacy of the Frost Witch procs really, really well outside of the Sundering window, because we don't get any Maelstrom Weapon Stack refunds outside of the window anymore. So you have to be very, very careful in particular with your Legacy procs. You have to be very careful about that, okay? Now, we got a proc on Ascendance. Everything's good. You can just go crazy. We can see our Sundering is coming back, so we want to use all of our Storm Strike procs, all of our Lightning Bolt procs. We'll try to get rid of as many of them as we can. We'll go Wolves into Sundering. Boom. There we go. Now we're back into it. Now, our next two Chain Lightnings are going to refund. So we want to try and get rid of Storm Strike as much as we can. Here, Storm Strike, then Chain Lightning. There we go. And then we'll get a reset, and then we'll get the refund as well. So you're trying to, like, utilize that refund as best you can. But ultimately, this set just provides us with way more damage than the old tier set did. And that's what you're going to hopefully notice in the dungeon footage. Our damage really gets more consolidated into Chain Lightning. Because even on single target, you're going to use those two Chain Lightnings to get Maelstrom Weapon Stacks back. You can see I had a 206k uh, crit for my Chain Lightning. So Chain Lightning hits really, really hard. It ends up being the majority of your damage now. You can see it's 36%. Crash Lightning's 20%. If I look at an old... Uh, this is before I had the tier set bonus. This, uh, my Chain Lightning was about 22%. My Crash Lightning was 12%. Wind Fury was much higher. If we look at it now, 
Chain Lightning's 36%, Crash Lightning's 20%, Wind Fury's still 10%, but those other two have gone way up because the damage that you're getting from this is crazy. Your Mastery gets up by 24%, that buffs your Crash Lightning and your Chain Lightning, and then of course, um, the extra two Chain Lightnings that do double damage after you press Sundering, that's where you're getting a lot of your damage. But, in terms of the Maelstrom weapon stack, your sort of resource economy, it's a little different than it was before now. Instead of it being after every single Storm Strike, you're getting a Maelstrom weapon stack. Now, you're refunding those Chain Lightnings. So, if you do a 10 stack Maelstrom weapon Chain Lightning, you'll get five Maelstrom weapon stacks back. So you can immediately do another Chain Lightning if you wanted to. And again, all the while, this could refund itself as well with Static Accumulation. So you could use, you could actually get like way too much refunding here sometimes. If you get, that, that would be kind of getting unlucky, I guess. But if you use a 10 stack Chain Lightning um, uh, a Spender and then it refunds itself with Static Accumulation, you're actually kind of wasting a little bit of the refund that you're getting from the tier set bonus. Now, that doesn't happen that much in my experience from what I've seen so far. I've done a couple dungeons so far. It seems perfectly fine. And does this work with the Storm Gamba build? Yes, it works perfectly fine with the Storm Gamba build. And um, let me jump into the dungeon footage here. Uh, right, so here's an Oldemon 17 that we did. Um, so it's a decent key right now for whatever key levels you guys are doing. And uh, this is our opening pack. Again, you go Doom Winds into Sundering, and then we're already into our window, right? And then you're just pumping. You just oh, pump yeah, damage. Big, big key, and we're doing 260k right now. So okay. my damage has already gone up 280k oh. for a second there. We almost hit 300k on this one pack. So I, f I can definitely feel it that my damage is already higher. I didn't even get an Ascendance proc really at an ideal time. I got it at the very end here, but... The build feels really, really smooth. Of course, whenever you're getting those Ascendance procs, like, it, it feels incredibly smooth because you're just pressing Wind Strike and you're getting the free Lightning Bolts or Chain Lightnings going out and everything's fine. Like, you're generating resources at a crazy, crazy pace. The only real thing that you need to be worried about now, you really do have to kind of min-max your Sundering buff. So... When you press Sundering, you need to be very aware that you've got those two Chain Lightnings in the chamber. And you want to try and use them to get your... Not only to refund the Maelstrom Weapon Stacks that they spend, but also to give you that Storm Strike back because of Legacy of the Frost Witch. So there's a little bit of mental gymnastics that you're doing there where you're making sure that you're managing those procs correctly. So that you are able to smooth out your rotation. So that you never have a drought where it's like if you do it incorrectly, you will notice that you have a bit of a drought. That you don't have any buttons to press for maybe one or two seconds. And that's a bad thing. You don't want that situation ever to, to happen. So I'm here to tell you that if you play it correctly, that situation does not happen. And it's all about just kind of managing the new chain lightning procs that you're getting. And making sure that you do it correctly. So, so as to reset your storm strike to get the refund on those the chain lighting that you spent all that kind of stuff okay um in this um oldemon we do in fact there's a really that's a really bad timing on uh, uh sentence proc in this oldemon we go do the second boss first if you guys are wondering about an oldemon strategy go and do the second boss first um because there's so many bosses in oldemon you don't need it for the first boss but you want to get lust on cooldown really quickly i would encourage you to go run the second boss first and blow your lust right there because that's the more difficult boss between the first two bosses which are like they're really close to each other right so um yeah you can see here on law and aoe damage we're just absolutely pumping like this is this is really rare and again this build doesn't have enormous burst windows it does have a Doom Winds plus Sundering window, which is very, very good. But um, it's not like other classes like Arcane Mage, which has like five cooldowns that it layers together, and then it's doing like 400k out of the gaze. This is like consistent damage. You're always going to be doing 160 to like 250, 150 to 250k on AoE packs, basically, all the time. This is a small pack. This is only three. I get stunned there like an idiot. This is a three pack uh, of mobs, so... Again, there's less AOE. We're still doing 130k. Oh, no, that's new name. Sorry. We're actually way behind on this pack. So, I think we do catch up here at the end. Let me check here. New name is just uh, Crusher. There's our Sundering window. Chain Lightning's coming out. We're going to catch up on some damage here. 
<clears throat> Crash Lightning, get my Wolves out. We do end up catching up by the end of this pull. And that's always how this build works, right? I always try to show you guys that this build really functions uh, as a consistent DPS source. And by the end of a pull, you will always be pulling yourself back to the top of the meters if the if the pull lasts for a little bit of time. So it's really, really cool for that reason. You don't have those big burst windows at the beginning, but by the end of the pull, you're at the top of the meters. Uh, we did 86k right there. So um, it's always really fun to see that. And it's nice to just, you got to trust in the process. Here's Bromac. Bromok, um, we do have Lust here, so we end up going. Uh, anytime you can add haste to this build, it's very, very good. Here's the only real weird thing about the new tier set bonus. It will highlight Chain Lightning for you, as you can see right now on my bars. It's got Chain Lightning lit up because it's like, listen, you've got your Chain Lightning buff. You need to use it. So in my brain, I'm just like pressing it, but I'm not tracking the fact that I don't have five or ten stacks of Maelstrom weapon. So I actually can't do an instant cast Chain Lightning. So you need to be a little bit aware of where your Maelstrom weapon stacks are at. Um, I don't have a full tracker. I started tracking it just in my head afterwards once I realized that little mistake. So uh, make sure that you kind of do that because you don't want to stand there trying to cast chain landing like an idiot. Here's the totem. The most difficult part of this pull of this entire boss fight is the totem. You need to blow it up as quickly as you can. I had entangling, so it added a little bit of a wrinkle there. And boom, we ended up killing him. He does get his own bloodlust off, but it's not a big deal. We're doing 104k. This fight's great for us because there's AoE. Um, really, really great. Anytime you add any AoE for us, uh, this this Gamba build does so much damage. So Rich is pumping on his Hunter. Really great to see. He, Rich has been doing crazy damage on his uh, MM Hunter, which is really awesome. He's just been absolutely crushing it. So there's our Sundering window. We have Chain Lightning ready to go. Again, second totem is up. I stood in the circle, which is a big mistake. But I end up recovering. I get up and recover. We end up killing this totem. This healer was really good. But I, I did mess up pretty hard right there on the uh, circle. There's too many circles. There's like the... His, there's his little... There's the circle from the totem. There's his blue lightning circle he does. Then there's the green uh, uh, entangling circle. There's too many circles, man. But you can see our damage is fine. We're doing 110k. It's fine. Perfectly fine. Good for this boss, and then uh, we end up getting him down. We go back and do the first boss fight again. The first boss fight for us is, like, really great because it's three-target cleave, which, again, is good for crash lightning. It's good for chain lightning. It's just good for us in general. Uh, Rich and I are just pumping the meters. I get a proc on a sentence. We're just almost at 175k here. 160k. It's super, super good. But, yeah, most of this build just revolves with the new tier set bonus. Most of it is revolving around you being able to manage... Your Legacy of the Frost Witch procs, and then um, the new refund that you get after you press a, sen or, um, a Sundering. Sorry. You get those two Chain Lightnings, they're going to refund half the Maelstrom spent. So, you know, I would encourage you to spend 10 Maelstrom Weapon Stacks on them, because then you're going to get five back. I think if you spend five Maelstrom Weapon Stacks, you get three back. I believe it rounds up, but I don't know about that, actually. I haven't confirmed that. You can see on this boss fight, we're doing 121k perfectly fine we'll speed ahead here um again 170k on most trash packs i think you're gonna average 150 or 160k to 250k on the trash packs depending if you get a proc or not on your uh, sentence and you will eventually get a proc like it's inevitable it will happen um you just have to kind of be patient and wait for it um like there's a proc right there and this is even a decent time to get it it's at the very end we weren't stunning these mobs. So Bella, Bella didn't quite know that we needed to stun them. Um, I did know, but I'd already used my cap totem. So we, we just didn't really play that correctly. But I think I explained it to him here. Yeah, Harry, he figures it out now. That's how you, that's how you deal with it. That's how, you, that's how you deal with the ramping damage they do. You have to stun them. So you learn something new every day. It's all good. Belly just wasn't sure. <laughs> Here's a single target fight for us. This is, um, I don't think we do very well here. So this is like the first part of the build that I'm interested in sort of figuring out how to make this better. Our single target damage is okay, but it's not great. By the end of the fight, I don't know what we end up being here. We're settling at around 60k here. So we're at the 62k. It's not terrible. But it's not great. That's I do want to say that. 
Um, I think I end up dying here, maybe. That also might be why we lose a little bit of damage. Also, with the Sundering Window, it is a little bit weird because you're alternating between Chain Lightning and and uh, Lightning Bolt. And really, when Ascendance procs, you want to be casting Lightning Bolt because it does more damage. But when you press, when you press Sundering, you need to have, be pressing Chain Lightning to consume the refund, right? So there's a bit of a strange tension there that you have to kind of work with. Um, it's something that you're gonna if you if you get the four piece and you're playing the Gamba build, you're just gonna have to get used to it. It's just part of the game now um, with this four piece bonus. But it's something it's you know it's not a big deal. Oh yeah, I opened my. Uh, that's silly of me. But yeah, our damage is not good here. It is not good. This fight is just particularly annoying. So that might be part of the reason why. But I do want to I do want to make sure that I stress I'm not super happy with my damage here. It's actually not bad by the end because we did get a proc there. But it could be better. I think this is just me not knowing how to maximize the DPS here. We settle at about 66k by the end. It's not bad. It, it could get better. It'll improve. Okay. Here's another big AoE pack. Again, we've got Sundering, boom, Sundering right there into the Chain Lightnings that do double damage. Look, at we're doing 160k. New Name's clapping here. Both the Shamans went off right here. Uh, New Name's doing lots of damage. Really good by him. He doesn't even have 4-piece, I don't think, on his Ellie Shaman. So he's absolutely slapping for not having 4-piece. But we're, yeah, we're right there. We're right there on the damage. Right, Like I said, most pulls, depending on how big the packs are, you're looking at something like 160 to 260 or 150 to 250k. It's really, really good. This is three target cleave right here. We're doing big damage on three target cleave. Awesome stuff right here. 160k on three target cleave. And then we get over here. This is a bigger cleave. I have Sundering coming off cooldown. This is the cool thing about this build. You always have Sundering like on every pack, right? Because it's a 40 second cooldown. So I'm trying to get rid of my lightning bolts or my chain lightnings and my... And my uh, I'm trying to get rid of all my stuff because I'm about to generate an enormous amount of... Of maelstrom weapon stacks and do a crazy amount of damage so there's a bit of a tension there you got to work with that try to dump your um your chain lightnings and your storm strikes so that you can do your sundering window because you're going to have a a massively accelerated uh you know generation of resources there so this is a tough pack here this guy does earthquake he links the earthquake our healer really really good by him and then i forgot what kills me here i have a curse on me but he gets rid of that I'm doing damage, and then I get hit by the cleave. That's what it is. These custodians right here, they do a cleave. And I get smacked by that multiple times in a row like an idiot. So I'm standing in the wrong spot, essentially. And I get whacked by a cleave here, I think. There's Hail of Stone. They end up dying. I think it's right here. Earthquake goes off, plus a cleave goes off, and I die. So I died to a cleave. So watch where you're standing as melee with the Gamba build. You do have to be kind of right underneath the the butts of the enemies, unfortunately. But um, you just just be careful. Be very careful. Almost every dungeon in the rotation right now has some sort of like frontal slam. There, there's so many of them. It's actually really frustrating. Here's a here's a big pull. We pop off here. We get ascendance. Look at our damage here. Ascendance plus sundering here. 280k right now. We're just absolutely crushing. The meters. This is what you're... I didn't even pop my potions, and I should have. If I popped a potion here, we would have done 300k. So, I made... That's kind of a mistake on my end, but... The, you know, these are kind of the limits. This is this is the upper limit of what you're able to do. Another Ascendance proc. That was crazy. Another Ascendance proc. Really, really good pull for us right there. So, that's what you're kind of capable of doing. Here's another single target boss fight. The damage is not super great. Let's just... I'm going to kind of fast forward through it. I don't want to keep you here all day, but... Let's hope, let's see if we can get above, like, 70k on this boss fight. Because I, I don't think we can. And I, again, this is something I need to work on. I think I pop healing here. We do get a proc. So we're at 63k right now. 64. Climbing a little bit. We are crushing this boss. This boss is dying so fast. Here's the intermission. Our damage is going to go down a little bit here just because there's a lot of movement. So maybe expecting 70k is a little bit much. Back to the boss fight. Hopefully, we settle around 55k, maybe. We almost die here. I think we do. Yeah, we get him there. So, we're at 52, 53k by the very end. Again, not the best. I, I, I want to improve this. I do think the single target has suffered a little bit from the old tier set bonus. That's that's kind of my conclusion there. So, let's get to the final boss. Um, Again, these packs, we're doing tons of damage on this. 160k. Really, really good stuff. Um, I don't think this this is going to struggle on AoE damage whatsoever. Get to the final boss from here. We do a little cheat where you can kind of skip 
the last trash pack and uh, not have to deal with it because they're very annoying. Here's the last boss, Chrono Lord uh, Deos. De Deos? I don't even know. We pop Lust and we're going. We're off to the races. If we have Lust, we're kind of golden here, right? I don't know why I jumped through the boss there. I'm an idiot. Uh, just don't pay attention to that. We're doing 100, 100k. Rich is clapping. Look at Rich's damage right now. 156k on the uh, MM Hunter. He's just so well. Doing so well. It's really great to see. We're, we're, uh, we're staying relevant though. And hopefully we will stay relevant for the whole time here. Once we get into uh, the the Chrono section. Again, anytime you get additional haste with the Gamba build, it is so good. And as you step into these things, you get additional haste, right? Boom. We're stepping in. I should be on the closer one. I don't know why I'm far all the way back here, but I'm an idiot. There's Sundering. We can do Chain Lightning here to get the double damage. It is worth pressing in single target, I promise. You need to press it in single target because the double damage Chain Lightning will do more damage than the uh, Lightning Bolt ever will. So just make sure you do that. We're at 90k right now. We'll skip ahead a little bit. We'll get to the next phase where we get the... Uh, I heal Rich here just to keep him alive because we want him to keep doing damage. Now we get the rewind here in a second. I'm just healing myself. We're losing some damage here just because everybody's taking giga damage. Chain lightning from here. Then we go doom winds into a big proc on ascendance. And we're clapping. We get the double haste. Well, not double. We're getting the haste from standing in the rewind. But that was a great time for a proc. And uh, there you go. I think we settle around 75k maybe. 72. We'll get another sundering here. And then uh, do a chain lightning of course. To try to get the extra damage by the very end. And it settles at around 71k right there. So our overall damage ends up being... We have to kill one more trash back here. So we'll, we end up being 104k overall in a Legacy of Tier, which is super good. Super, super good. I'm happy with that. And again, the breakdown is a little bit more skewed towards Chain Lightning now because... Um, of the way the tier set bonus works, giving us those double damage chain lightnings. Our crash lightning is really high. Wind Fury is still doing 11.6%. Our spirit wolf damage, that's all the wolf damage put together. Ends up being 9%. Super, super good. So I love this. This uh, still works, guys. If you have the four piece for Enhancement Shaman, it still works for the Gamba build 100%. It works really, really well. And I'm going to keep doing some dungeons with the four piece. I'm going to do raid tonight, actually, with the four piece as well. We're going to try it on all the pure single target bosses in the heroic raid. So we're going to see how bad it ends up being. If it ends up being way, way worse than the old school one, we'll have to wait and see. I'm going to change my build a little bit, though. Instead of having Alpha Wolf, I'm going to run Elemental Assault. Um, so just to get the extra guaranteed Maelstrom weapon stack generation, we're going to have to see how that kind of works. But guys... If you're worried about the storm build with the new tier set bonus, don't be. It works very, very well. Okay? Let me know what you guys think in those comments down below. I love you. Thank you so much again for watching. I will see you in the next one.